Hello, good morning, my dear student. Today we are going to discuss another topic that is another endoparasite, which is known as the Echinococcus granulosus. This Echinococcus granulosus is also one of the important cestor helminth parasite, helminth endoparasite, a type of the tebwa, but it is not as much as long as that of the tebwa. This is the short type one, but their body structure is same. The main difference is about the number of the proglottis. That is, this is short type one. And these nematodes are present in the small intestine of different carnivorous mammals, including dog. So, the systematic position of this endoparasite, helmet parasite, is Hylum platyhelminthes. Hylum platyhelminthes. Then, class cestoda. Class cestoda. Order cyclophyllidia. Order cyclo. Cyclophyllidia, family tenidi, family tenidi, and genus Echinococcus species is granulosus. So this is one of the most important helminth parasite and it causes the disease echinococcosis or hydrated hyper which is a hyper work and uh, this causes the disease known as the hydrated disease and they are usually inhabited in the small intestine of certain carnivorous mammals including different domesticated dogs and in order to complete their life cycle, these helmet parasites also include two types of the host. One is the definitive host, the other is the intermediate host. For definitive host, they are different carnivorous mammals, including the carnivorous mammals, and the intermediate hosts are domesticated mammals, for example, seal cattle as well as human being also but in case of the human being they are accidentally accidentally form a intermediate carrier because these worms are usually deposited in the form of the seeds in different organs of the intermediate host that is in different organs such as lungs liver heart, kidney, spleen, as well as to the central nervous system, that is in case of the brain as well as in eyes. So this disease is very important because in case of the human being, if they are present in brain, then it is it may be fatal. So this is all about their systematic position. Then the next is about their morphology. Then as in case of the worm, the structure is same. That is, in case of the morphology, their body is differentiated into three parts. That is, head or scholars, neck and strobula. And the strobula is provided with different segments, which is known as the proglottis. So, the first structure for this endoparasite nematodes, the endoparasite helminth parasite is the structure of the the structure of the larval form. The structure of the larval form is just like this. This is the head or scolex and this is the
chocolate and sugar imbibed in a basic cup. This is the chocolate and this is the sugar. Sugar imbibed imbibed in a basic cup. In a basic cup and their size is usually three to six millimeter long and this is the figure the larval form of echinococcus granulosus then the next is the x this is all about the eggs of the echinococcus granulosa, which is provided with different these are the outer covering of the egg and inside this egg it is usually provided with sucker this is the three pairs of the hoop. This is the three pairs of hoops, and they are usually 32 to 36, 32 to 36 micrometer in length, having a diameter of 25 to 32. 25 to 32 micrometer in one. Figure the, this is the egg of Echinococcus granulosus. These are the egg and the larva of Echinococcus granulosus. Then the next structure is the other one. In fact, of the other one, this is the head. In the head, there is hooves, this is mouth, and this is the rostellum. This is the rostellum, and these are the Hooks, these are the, sorry, these are the suckers, these are the sucker, and these are the suckers, and these are the short neck, short neck, and these are the so these are the segment that is strobula. This is the immature segment and this is the immature segment and these are the germinal mask. This is the in mesio proglottis proglottis then this is the mesio proglottis where the testes and the uterus are usually present these are the uterus these are the testes and these are the ovary. These are the ovary. This is the measure proglottis. These are the segments of strobula. And this final portion is the measure proglottis. This is the internal structure. Yeah. 
series just like this this and these are the graphic properties which is provided with full of fertilized eggs these are the eggs and the, this is the Details. This is the gravy program. This figure the measure one of Echinococcus granulus and so Just like that of the tap worm, this is also. A hydrated tap worm and the, their body has also divided into three different segments. One is the head on scolex. This is the scolex. The next is the neck, and the, this whole portion is known as the scrobula. The body is divisible into three parts: head or scolex, neck, and the scrobula. And in the scrobula, again divided into three regions. The First region, which is just near to the egg, is known as the immature proglottis. And the medium one is the mature proglottis, and that the last one, which is provided with fully developed fertilized egg, is known as the gravid proglottis. So, these are about the structure of adult one. Then. This other one may be 3 mm to 6 mm in length. This may be 3 to 6 mm in length. And this is all about the structure of then what about the diameter? The diameter having 1 to 2 millimeter in diameter. This is all about the structure of larva, egg, and the mature adult worm of Echinococcus granulosus. Then the next one is the, the life cycle. Life cycle of Echinococcus granulosus. Let's see about the life cycle. The life cycle can be completed in two different forms. The definitive forms where adult or mature parasites are present and those larvae which are present in the form of the seeds are present in the intermediate host. That is, the adult worms are usually inhabited in the small intestine. At the one in the small intestine of dog. The other one are present in the small intestine of dog and the FR passes along with the the FR passes along with the passes. The FR passes it passes along with passes of definitive force that is dog. Then it is ingested by it is ingested by seed. Then inside the body of the seed, this larva develop into hexacant larva. This larva develop into hexacant embryo and inside the body of seed develop into hexacant larva. Then this larva penetrates the wall of the small intestine and the migrated in different parts of the body. That is, 
they enter through circulation and the reaches to liver, lungs, heart as well as in case of the kidney, in case of the skin or in case of the central nervous system. That is, it can be used to brain also to so they are usually encapsulated as a cyst inside the liver or lungs. It can be this is the lung or liver. This is the develop into develop into hydrated cyst. Hydrated cyst inside the body of the different organs of the seed. This is all about the life cycle in the seed. It is intermediate force when these infected muscles, which is provided with this hydrated disease, is usually ingested by dog. When it is ingested by dog, when such type of carcasses or infected seed, carcasses or infected seed is eaten by the dog, then infection can be occur and the life cycle again started and from this heart disease is developed into other states in the small intestine of the dog. This is inside the body of the dog. When Men can get infected when this cyst is accidentally ingested by human beings. That is, when the dog, the when from the dog, the infect, the egg usually passes along with the faces of the dog, and this passes along the egg can be contaminated in different watery vegetables in different contaminated soil through different contaminated water and accidentally accidentally man can get infected by ingestion of air and it enters inside the body of the human being and Inside the human being, it develops into and it develop into infectious stage larval form when the eggs are developed inside the small intestine, the hydrated hexangular larva develop in the small intestine, then it penetrates the wall of the small intestine and the penetrate the wall of the small intestine and the it forces in different organ, in different organ such as lungs, liver, heart, as well as brain. So, for this parasite, men can get accidentally, and men can get accidentally by ingestion of this air. And that this egg enter inside the body of human being and it reaches to stomach into the small intestine. In the small intestine, it develops into hexagon larva. And this hexagon larva penetrates the wall of the small intestine, passes through the bloodstream, and then it reaches to heart, lungs, liver, as well as spleen, as well as in the kidney, and it can also passes to the central nervous system and the races up to the brain. So, men can get infected incidentally through the contaminated water, through contaminated leafy vegetables, which are with this act of the echinococcus granulosa, which is present in the faces of the infected dog. So, these are the life cycle of echinococcus granulosa. Then, the duration of life cycle of this is usually three to three weeks to three weeks to four months after ingestion of the egg, egg of the definitive host and in case of the human being the seeds can be 
the cyst can be live for more than 5 to 10 years when symptom is not developed. These are about the life cycle of echinococcus granulosus. Then, the next is about the epidemiology, that is, how this parasitic disease is usually spread from one person to other person and the percentage of presence of these diseases in different parts of the world. It is about the epidemiology of this parasite, epidemiology and the risk factor, epidemiology and risk factor. Then the disease caused by this parasite is known as the cystisarcosis or cysti echinococcosis cysti echinococcosis is the disease caused by this echinococcus granulosus or hydrated tapeworm and this is formed by the larval stage larval stage of the echinococcus Granulosus formed by larval stage of Echinococcus granulosus, and this is found in Africa, Africa, Europe, Asia, and Middle East, Central and South America. Middle East. Central and South America and the parasite is transmitted to dog. The parasite is transmitted to dog when they ingest when they ingest the organ of other animal the organ of other animal that contain hydatidesis that contain hydatidesis and the most common method for transmission to human is by accidentally consumption of soil and water or food. The most common mode of transmission, the most common mode of transmission in Human is that by accidental consumption of by accidental consumption of soil or through contaminated water or food through contaminated water or food that has been contaminated with the pests and matter that has been contaminated with the pests and matter. The pests and matter of an infected dog of an infected and the egg can be delivered in soil for one year. The egg can deliver in soil for one year. So this is the way of transmission of the egg 
from the faces of the infected dog, that is epidemiology of these diseases. Then, pathogenicity. Pathogenicity means the disease caused by this helminth parasite. Pathogenicity. Pathogenicity. The disease caused by this parasite is known as the Echinococcus. And the main symptom is formed with the development of the hydatid cyst. And due to the enlargement of the cyst, it may cause due to enlargement of cysts in different parts of the body, it can cause discomfort, discomfort, pain, nausea, as well as vomiting, which is depend upon the this is depend upon the location of the area of body parts due to the development of the cells in different organs of the part. Their symptom can be can be different, and if they are present in the central nervous system, that is, in case of the brain, the cyst rupture is most frequently caused. Cyst rupture is most frequently caused by Trauma and may cause mild to severe, may cause mild to severe reaction, even that, even that, as a result of the relax of cystic fluid. Is a result of relax of cystic fluid. So, this hydatidosis may develop in different parts of the organ, that is, in case of the lungs, in case of the liver, also in case of the kidney, in case of the spleen, and also it can release through central nervous system into the brain as well as in the eyes. When this system, echinococcus develops in case of the brain, in case of the nerve cell, then it can be give a serious trauma and sometimes it may be even that can, can occur as a result of the relax of the cystic fluid. These are all about the yeah, pathogenicity that means disease caused by this helmin endoparasite. Then what about the treatment? Treatment. Treatment number one. Treatment number one is the in the past surgery was the only treatment for cystic echinococcus. Surgery was the only treatment for cystic. Gano focuses, but now it is chemotherapy. But now it is chemotherapy, preventive measure. 
preventive measure number one, prevent dog from feeding on the carcasses. Prevent dog from feeding from feeding on the carcasses of infected seal of infected seal number two control stray dog population control stray dog population number three restrict whole slaughter restrict on slaughter of sheep and the other livestock of sheep and other livestock then the next point is the point number four do not consume any food or water. Do not consume any food or water that may have been contaminated with that have they may have they may have been contaminated with hazel matter from dough and the fifth point is wash your hand with soap wash your hands with soap and warm water, warm water after handling dog and before handling food. After handling dog and before handling food. Then the last point. That is point number six is the this children the importance of washing hands. This children the importance of washing hands. Importance of washing hands to prevent infection. To prevent infection. So, these six points are the preventive measure from this helmet parasite. So, these are all about the structure and the life cycle. And the most important part that is the disease caused by this parasite, which is known as the echinococcosis. And when this echinococcosis developed in brain, it can also form seizure or the best treatment for this uh, for this disease is surgery. Surgery is the last option and the now up to up to there up to up to this time. Uh, uh, now it is the surgery is the most usually effective treatment. So that is the most effective treatment. Because during the time of the surgery, OS is usually removed from the infected host. So, this is all about the treatment, and the last point is the preventive measure. That is washing of the hands before handling food, and the before, before handling food, and the after handling dog. So, these are all about the history, all about the structure, all about the life cycle and all about their disease, epidemiology, as well as control measure of this echinococcus granulosus, which is commonly known as the hydrated tapeworm. So that's all for today class.